Welcome back to Pop Dissected. Whatever you are going through, however dark it may seem, there is an undeniable truth and strength in the fact that you are not alone. We all have struggles, and as long as you never give up on yourself, light will break through the darkness. Free Kesha has been an ongoing battle between singer Kesha Rose Siebert and her former music producer, Lucas Gottwald, professionally known as Dr. Luke. With the recent resurgence of this hashtag on social media, I think now is the perfect time to catch everyone up to speed on what's been going on. In previous videos I've done on Kesha, which can be found in the description, I've abstained from referring to Dr. Luke by name. However, he must be named because this man must be held accountable and the people will know what he's done. We'll be delving into the history of hashtag free Kesha, overview what's happened in the courts, and why this movement is trending again, and which artists are embroiled within this matter. I like to say that we will be discussing sensitive topics throughout this video, such as sexual assault, eating disorders, and other potentially emotionally upsetting material. If this may bother you, I will recommend you watch another video of mine instead. The hashtag Free Kesha movement dates all the way back to September of 2013, just about a year after Kesha released her sophomore studio album, Warrior. The initial petition rose to popularity, aiming for Kesha to have creative freedom in her music, triggered after Kesha claimed she didn't want to sing her hit song, Die Young, following a tragic event yet was forced to. She even implied a bit that she didn't even like the song. Her MTV reality series, My Crazy Beautiful Life, revealed how creatively stunted she was in making Warrior. Dr. Luke and her label were really trying to work towards replicating the sound and success of Kesha's first album and EP, Animal and Cannibal. Though she was only in the infancy of her career at the time, many critics blasted Kesha for being one-dimensional, too auto-tuned, too graphic, too suggestive and not talented. We know that Warrior was Kesha's attempt to branch out into a more rock sound that showcased her writing and vocal ability, which we'd eventually experience with her third album, Rainbow. This petition would state how Kesha, as a naive 18-year-old, would sign an eight-album contract with Dr. Luke, just to be pulled around by puppet strings as a moneymaker with no regard for her well-being or creativity. A year later, in October of 2014, the series of lawsuits to become known as Kesha vs. Dr. Luke would commence, in which she sued him for sexual battery, assault, and harassment, gender violence, and emotional abuse. From this point on, we've witnessed a lot of back and forth take place within the courts, and other famous people have become wrapped up in this matter. So let's talk about why Free Kesha is still so important, nearly a decade later. As we continue, let me know in the comments why you love Kesha, if you're a fan, and how she's inspired you. Before we dive headfirst into the arguments and rebuttals of court, let's look at where this all stemmed from. And for that, we have to go all the way back to 2005. And yes, this is how far back this matter goes. To keep it streamlined, I will highlight what I think are the most important things to note. But of course, if anything is left out on accident, please comment these things down below. In September of 2005, Kesha signed a six album deal with Dr. Luke after he convinces her to move from Nashville, Tennessee to Los Angeles, California. This album deal bound Kesha to his recording and publishing companies, Kaz Money, KMI, and Prescription Songs. October of 2005 is when the first act of sexual assault is committed by Dr. Luke, in which he gave Kesha sober pills, which were actually date rape drugs, after attending a party in Hollywood. Kesha would then call her mother to relay the events of what she thought had happened the night before because she blacked out. Kesha would then leave Dr. Luke and get a management deal with DAS Communications the next year, only for Dr. Luke to coerce Kesha to come back and work with him. By chance, Kesha would then be featured on Flo Rida's single, Right Round, which to this day, she rarely remains credited and has said she was never paid for it. After Kesha gained career momentum, DAS Communications would sue both her and Dr. Luke for millions of dollars. In 2011, Kesha was deposed by DAS, and here, both her and her mother claim no unwanted advances or assaults were committed by Dr. Luke. It would later be revealed that Kesha relayed the events of what happened in 2005 to David Sonnerberg, who founded DAS Communications. He, on the record, stated he was in contact with Kesha because she no longer 
wanted to be around Dr. Luke or work with him. Though this deposition was related to unpaid commissions, it revealed so much more and is the biggest piece of evidence supporting what Kesha said did in fact happen. After Dr. Luke founded the label Kimasabi, Kesha was brought over to it. This even further gets her tangled up in business affairs. We've already discussed Warrior's creative struggles, so we jump to January of 2014, in which Kesha enters residential treatment for an eating disorder. Dr. Luke was blamed for pressuring Kesha into altering her physical appearance. It created this awful dichotomy that the skinnier she got, the more praise she received on her appearance, until she was so mentally warped in understanding food, she didn't even know how to properly nourish herself anymore. After Kesha filed her lawsuit in October of 2014, Dr. Luke would countersue the same exact day. Using her deposition in which she states nothing happened to her, this would serve as the biggest piece of evidence to rebuttal a lot of the things Kesha said and was seeking. Let it not be unknown that people in great positions of power can bully and terrorize those who are vulnerable, leading them to lie out of fear of what could happen to them. After being sexually assaulted and her career just starting out, I'm sure Kesha felt she had no choice but to lie during her deposition. There are so many lawsuits and countersuits, too many to cover, so I'll stick to the most prominent ones and link a timeline of these events in the description for you to read up upon. Kesha was denied release from her contract with Kimasabi. A judge felt there wasn't sufficient evidence to back Kesha's claims. Her contract was typical for the industry, Dr. Luke had invested millions into her career already, and was offering her to fulfill her contract without his involvement. However, he would of course still profit from her work. This would then birth the modern free Kesha movement. Following this, Dr. Luke would state all these lawsuits were actually, apparently, motivated by money. People constantly love to say, why didn't this person come out sooner about their assault? Dr. Luke's reasoning for Kesha's suits are a perfect example. If anyone thinks for a moment that Kesha and her mother orchestrated some master plan dating back to 2005 to get money, then you're honestly crazy. It's these type of comments that deter survivors from ever speaking out. Survivors are never asked, are you okay, or are told, you're so strong. Their motives are questioned, their truth is dismantled and twisted. This case goes to show that even if you're a celebrity, sexual assault will always be a playground for people to do as they please. What's so frustrating is that a case like this, Kesha only has verbal statements made to her mother and other friends or colleagues. There is no material evidence. That is the bitter truth about this. How can it be proved? It's heartbreaking. Even reading back over this stuff to make this video, I am so torn and angry about this situation. How do you prove someone took advantage of you and then threatened to keep you silent? Not only this, but Kesha was so discredited with what she said. Some cited her lewd lyricism or costuming, her persona she had when she had the dollar sign in her name, or jokes she's made in interviews, using this to discredit her words and make her seem unreliable and that she can't be taken seriously. I think that intent is beyond wicked. Sony was unable to terminate Kesha's contract at Kimosabi, since they basically didn't have any real control in the subsidiary. You can see, Dr. Luke was able to isolate Kesha to be under his control, a hallmark characteristic of an abuser. Kesha would take to Instagram to state she would be offered her contractual freedom if she retracted all statements and confessed to lying. An offer a spokesperson for Dr. Luke denied was ever given. Multiple celebrities would go on to offer their support to Kesha following this, offering words of encouragement and sharing their own experiences of being within abusive situations. Kesha's lawsuit for sexual assault, harassment, and gender violence would be thrown out in April of 2016. The judge, who is married to an owner of a law firm at Sony, said that Kesha's claims fall outside the statute of limitations and do not have basis to really be defined as gender motivated. Kesha would drop her sexual abuse lawsuit in August of the same year, wanting to just find happiness and peace instead of this continual distress. In April of 2017, Dr. Luke would step down as the CEO of Kimosabi, adopt new aliases, 
and still work as a producer while also still having ties to this label. Both Lady Gaga and Katy Perry would be brought up in this case. Kesha would claim in a series of texts to Lady Gaga that Katy was assaulted by Dr. Luke. Following a deposition, Katy would deny this and then Kesha would get sued for defamation. Lady Gaga would be deposed multiple times. Her final deposition, she would cite how she believes Kesha and what she shared. She'd also go to social media prior to this to waive any tension that may have been curated between her and Katie. To close out the court proceedings, Kesha was accused of defamation and needed to pay Dr. Luke several hundred thousand dollars. But now, Dr. Luke, as a private figure, must prove Kesha made these statements out of malice. If Kesha wins this, Dr. Luke will have to pay her damages. I know this was a lot to be covered, but it catches us up to speed on where we are in this case and the history of it. I think this boils down to Dr. Luke aggressively pursuing Kesha even after she dropped charges and was only interested in undoing her contract. I think by Dr. Luke continually going after Kesha, even after she made the decision to end her legal battles, speaks to this very vindictive, I'm going to bury you type behavior. If you wonder where Kesha stands now, here's this post outlining the freedoms or lack thereof Kesha has while still tied up in her contract. Kesha is still under Kimasabi, thus by default, Dr. Luke is still profiting from her work, since he still has business relations with him, even if he isn't the CEO anymore. Kesha has released six efforts, four albums and two EPs. I've read her contract is for five, six, or eight albums. At the least, she has one more album left and has recently revealed how she has new music coming out this year. If it's eight in total, I think the EPs would count in some sense, but I don't know what her contract is specifically, if it includes all releases or only albums. I'd like to point out multiple female artists have pointed out questionable things about Dr. Luke and their disdain or disapproval of him as a person. This brings us to today and why hashtag free Kesha is trending. It's because of Kim Petrus's new EP, which is entirely produced by Dr. Luke. Currently, Dr. Luke has been primarily credited on Kim's work and Doja Cat's. However, we'll touch on Doja in a bit. Now, there's no way to dance around this, but Dr. Luke working on an EP that's rooted in heavy sexual freedom, given what Kesha and others have said about him, is the sick and twisted irony. Lady Gaga also being name dropped in a song and given her involvement in Kesha's case is just plain wrong. What I find very shocking is Kim Petrus's own statements in regard to the whole situation from a while back. She stated she would never work with someone she believed abused women, then backpedaled, saying she doesn't want to dismiss anyone's experiences, but hers have been good with Dr. Luke. What is so moronic about this statement is she is saying, well, it didn't happen to me, so I'm fine with him. A collaborator on Kim's recent EP, who cannot be found on Twitter, stated several years back that Kim, at that time, was not contractually tied to Dr. Luke. Thus, she was or is still willingly working with him. I find this infuriating beyond belief. Now, I'm not gonna encourage any type of hate or slander towards Kim, but I sincerely think she needs to think about the implications of her own statements and her working relationship with Dr. Luke. You can't say you won't work with an abuser, yet do it anyway. In a way, she is diminishing Kesha's experiences. It's not like Dr. Luke was only rude and standoffish to Kesha, but was very kind to Kim. What he did was and is still severe. He raped and abused Kesha. Kim has also stated in a recent interview that there's a different standard for women, which is so completely, unbelievably inapplicable to her working with Dr. Luke. It's a negligent response at best and is beside the point. She stated that the blame falls on her. And of course, you, the artist, are going to be blamed and held accountable for working with Dr. Luke. It shouldn't be any other way. Kesha's court case goes back to 2014, so the knowledge of these legal troubles have been in existence since almost a decade. That said, I don't know if Kim actually has a contract with Dr. Luke. I don't know anything about that. Maybe she's in a dodgy or dangerous situation. I don't know. But based just on the responses she's given, it's ridiculous. On to Doja Cat and Saweetie. Saweetie essentially stated, though she knew or 
didn't know of the allegations, he can't always put a face to the name, and she didn't want to risk losing her artistry. However, she seemed to imply she wouldn't work with Dr. Luke again. I understand an artist wanting to leverage their own success, and I get when you have an opportunity, you have to take it. That's how business works. However, given her statement, I think working with Dr. Luke is just a bit more than controversial. This brings us to Doja Cat. She's been signed to Kimasabi since 2013, just a year or so before Kesha's court case kicked into high gear and was made very public. Doja Cat recently stated he has credit on things he did not work on and doesn't need to work with him again. However, it was nice to. She retracted this pretty quickly, essentially saying what she said was not true. I think this speaks to something very interesting. I think what Doja Cat initially said was true, but something happened within Kimasabi and she had to reissue a new statement. I've been able to find some pretty compelling Twitter accounts exploring not only Kesha and Dr. Luke, but also Doja Cat when it comes to her working relationship with him. Again, many have speculated she is in a bad contract and is dealing with a lot, but of course we don't know the true details. What I find so awful is so many of these things, such as abuse of power, we will never find out about until it's too late. Sure, we can talk all day about industry executives using their power to help music perform well. That is nothing compared to this. These powerful people, powerful men, have the ability to quite literally destroy an entire artist's livelihood and career if they want to. They can buy out people who work with them, give them hush-hush money, and get people on their side. These abusive people are great manipulators too, and I'm sure Dr. Luke has been able to gaslight Kesha to people to get them on his good side. I'd also like to note everything I've stated about what Kesha said was never conflated with the word allegation. I've been an animal since 2011. The first song I really fell in love with was Hungover. I remember being in the mountains and listening to it on my iPad as I was driving through this tiny town with a huge mountain behind it while the sun was setting. This is one of my favorite memories and one that comes up when I think of Kesha. I've seen Kesha on the Rainbow Tour. I saw her with Macklemore. She is one of my top five favorite artists of all time. She has been a wonderful supporter of so many rights I believe in. And what has happened to her is sad. We have a woman who sought after a career and was taken in by a sick predator and abuser who locked her up and used her for profit and has systematically dismantled her career, financially burdened her, taken away the success she used to have, but he still has a plentiful career. So with that, I do believe Kesha. Dr. Luke is almost akin to being the Harvey Weinstein of the music industry. Harvey Weinstein's abuse and assault was an open secret. Rose McGowan, who showed support for Kesha, was the first person to speak out against Harvey, and she was blacklisted from the industry and buried. She was really the genesis of the hashtag MeToo movement. We see time and time again how women will take the fall, unfairly so, for the abuse and corruption committed by men. This is a staple of the entertainment industry, and it's horrible. This is one of the most severe and prevalent examples of recent times. Can you imagine what it's like to be 18, hopeful for a wonderful career? You meet someone who promises you everything, and then steals your joy, inflicts pain on you, and rewires your own pattern of thinking? This is what happened to Kesha. Now, I know Kesha is not the only one who has suffered at the hands of Dr. Luke, and is not the only person who is suffering injustices within the music industry and the entertainment business. However, this has recently become prevalent, so I did want to focus my intention on this. Harvey Weinstein was taken down. Britney Spears was freed. It's been nearly two decades, and now it is Kesha Rose Siebert's turn, and it's time for Dr. Luke to be held accountable. We may not be able to step inside a courtroom and speak on Kesha's behalf, but what we can do is stay loud, stay proactive, and keep spreading awareness. Kesha, one day you will be free. Until then, we will keep with our message, free Kesha. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to get more future content on all your favorite pop stars. And if you'd like to help decide future video topics, get shoutouts and exclusive chat and name badges, then I'd love to have you as a channel member. Thank you for watching.